Hello, I hope you're doing well. I'm Milad Kambari, and welcome to another tutorial on Corona rendering. In this episode, I want to talk about which render denoiser or denoising mode is more suitable for us and our renders, which one offers better speed, and which gives us better quality. I want to go through the different denoising modes one by one. Let's start with the Firefly mode. The thing about Firefly mode is that it doesn't have much practical use. Its job is to detect and remove overly bright spots in the scene and correct them. The system works in a way that you can only see its effect after stopping the render. Until the render is stopped, you won't see the effect of Firefly. Here, I stop the render and set the value to zero. As you can see, it has very little effect and is not very practical. It only removes issues related to bright light points. Now let's move on to the next mode. The next mode, NVIDIA GPU AI, is one of the best denoising options. In this mode, once you press the render button, it starts applying the denoiser from the second pass. We wait a moment until it reaches the second pass. Now that it has reached it, the denoiser is applied. You don't even need to stop the render. Personally, I use this mode a lot, especially because of its speed and how quickly it gets me to a usable result in rendering. Right now, since the scene has a lot of noise, if we check the noise percentage, it's at 14%, which is quite high. So we don't get a good result. Even if I set the value to zero, there's not much difference because the base noise level is already high. So the longer I wait and the lower the noise gets, the better the denoising result will be. Now let's test the interactive mode. That means seeing how this same GPU mode performs in interactive rendering. One thing to note is that in interactive mode, when you zoom in on a specific area, since the region is smaller, more denoising happens. Also, keep in mind that the NVIDIA GPU mode only works on NVIDIA graphics cards. You can't use this mode on regular, non-NVIDIA graphics cards. However, Corona has introduced a solution that allows non-NVIDIA graphics cards to use the GPU system too, which I'll explain in a bit. For non-NVIDIA graphics cards, it uses the Intel CPU GPU AI mode. That means if your system doesn't have a GPU, it switches to using the CPU and applies AI-based denoising. Even though it's labeled Intel CPU, it doesn't necessarily mean your CPU has to be from Intel. Any other CPU brand can work too. This Intel CPU and GPU AI system is new. Previously, it only worked with NVIDIA graphics cards, but now it says any brand is fine as long as there is a GPU. So so first it checks whether there is a GPU, if not it switches to CPU. The key thing is that when you make changes they won't show up in the scene until you stop the render. Unlike the NVIDIA mode, which applies changes instantly and shows the effect in real time, this one only shows results after stopping. And it's not very powerful either. This NVIDIA CPU or GPU AI mode is just less powerful. The next mode is Corona High Quality, which is one of the oldest denoising systems. Among all available options, it has traditionally performed well. However, based on my own experience, the quality it provides isn't exceptional. Personally, I see that the NVIDIA GPU gives me better results overall. In Corona High Quality mode, the system requires the image filter to be set to high quality, also, keep in mind that before your render finishes, you can adjust both the denoise amount and the radius. The radius controls how much influence the denoiser will have. I'll give an example of this in a moment. When working with Corona High Quality, it's very important to consider the interactive rendering. If you look here, you'll see the number of denoise passes like 4 out of 7 or 6 out of 7. These values come from the number of light sources in your light mix. 
The more lights you have, the longer it takes for denoising to be applied. The standard noise level for clean denoising is typically around 4 or 5. So if you see that your render's noise level has dropped below that, it's a good point to stop the rendering process. Now let's move on to the gather data for later option. It's actually a very useful and interesting system. What it does is collect denoising data during the render but it doesn't apply it immediately. Instead, it waits until the render is fully complete before applying the denoising info. Unlike the older method, where you would press stop and immediately see denoise take effect in the frame, this one works differently. It requires you to stop the render and then press woo, save CXR room. Once you do that, you save the frame. I've already done this before, but let me save it again now. After saving, I'll open the frame using the Corona Image Editor. I click Open, discard the current one, and reopen the file named test underscore zero one. When you reopen the scene, you'll need to reapply all your tone mapping, highlight compression, and exposure adjustments. For example, I'll switch to light mix and increase the contrast again. Basically, tone mapping has to be reapplied manually. Now I'll slightly warm up the scene to improve the overall feel. Let's set the white balance to 7000 Kelvin. Still, the denoiser hasn't been applied yet. If I change the value now, nothing happens. Only when I click the denoise button will the changes take effect. Let's wait a few seconds for it to process. Now the denoise is applied. If I increase or decrease the amount, you'll see the effect. In the custom denoise section, you can configure it in detail. Choose which lights to exclude, select different denoise modes, or change the radius per light. For example, if I set a very high denoise radius, you'll see a noticeable change. The higher the radius, the more area it blends and affects. What happens then is that lots of detail gets lost since a wider pixel range gets blended. But the good thing about the gather data for later mode is that I can revert, change the denoise radius back to one, press the denoise button again and see the new result. Let's wait a second. See, it's like going in reverse, like pressing control plus Z. You regain that lost detail. You can always go back and change the settings again and reapply the denoise. That's basically the overall idea. Personally, I prefer to use the NVIDIA GPU mode most of the time. As I mentioned at the beginning, the reason is that in this mode, whether it's night renders or day renders, I've gotten better results compared to Corona high quality. For example, in nighttime exterior renders, the denoising is noticeably better. And most importantly, during the rendering process, it actually shows me the amount of denoising being applied. That's something I find more intuitive and helpful, and I've personally gotten better outcomes from it. It helps produce a much cleaner scene overall. So that was the overview of which denoiser works best. I should say that the effectiveness of denoising heavily depends on your hardware. It really matters what system you're working with. If you have a good GPU, then the NVIDIA mode can be an excellent option for you. It's faster and delivers higher quality results. At the end of this tutorial, I hope the information shared in this tutorial has been useful and interesting for you.